Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. We're so glad you're here. It's been a busy week around here this week. Definitely. Uh, we had a huge amount of rain, which we're so grateful for, for our pastures and everything, but it's also, with the rain comes a lot of mud. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely, especially when you have a cow pen. That's right. <laughs> That's meant, meant mostly dirt. It turns to sludge. That's right. <laughs> Later. So, uh, but, but the cow pen stayed dry, so they have a dry place to sleep, and we're super thankful we had to do some engineering on that. And we've hardly been able to get in the garden. I'm a little bit afraid of the weeds taking over because it's been so muddy, you can hardly step in there. But we, uh, Elijah ventured in, and he brought back some pretty awesome cucumbers. Yeah, so um, we have a few of them. Here's one of them. This one's a pretty good sized uh, cucumber, you know, uh, and you can make probably a good casserole out of this. I mean, I haven't heard salad. of salad. Salad, yes, salad. But then here's an even bigger one. You could, what could you make with this? A bigger salad? You could probably make a bigger salad <laughs> a with that. A whole bunch of pickles. Yeah, and then, oh, this one. This one, I don't know how heavy this one is, but it's really big. So these and are Armenian cucumbers, and um, they have a mild flavor, and they grow really big. And they're, yeah, they're supposed to, yeah. <laughs> and, and then, then here is a huge one. This <laughs> one is a four and a half pounder, and uh, we went in there, and we harvested this, and we were like, Hey guys, do you think this was ready to harvest? <laughs> I mean, I, I wasn't sure. I probably should have asked you first, but right. maybe beyond ready. Yeah. So we've uh, been stocking up. I'm going to let Elijah come and take this. <laughs> he, w he had a huge harvest the other day. And um, so we've been gathering the pickling salt and our um, pickling spices. And Rachel is ready to embark on some sweet pickles and dill pickles and she who already, knows what else she kinds already of made a batch of sweet pickles yeah and we're gonna did. eat it on saturday yes we had to wait a whole week so oh, this, well. the suspense is killing us oh yeah uh we also our baby chicks are growing oh, yes. getting big they're getting new feathers and they're jumping high and um on top of the food starting to get on top out of the, of the jars of food that off. are about this tall they're just jumping up and going to sleep on it you think they look they look dead <laughs> They have their head oh, when over when they're asleep or they're just flat out and you, they look like they're <laughs> dead. And you walk past and you're like, oh, all the chicks are dead. And then you're like, oh, wait, no, they're, they're alive. They're just breathing. Asleep. They're they just sleep asleep. They sleep flat as a pancake. It scares you. Yeah, it's really crazy. And then later on, we have a little announcement about our cow. So we're going to wait for more people to join in. Um, welcome. Thanks for joining us. We're so glad that you're here. I'm Holly, and this is Abigail. Hi. And we're from the cooking family, and we are going to show you some awesome breakfast today. Uh, we do a lot of breakfast in our Instant Pot. Yep. Uh, we want to welcome the Instant Pot 101 for Beginners group. We're so glad you guys are here. And um, hi to Gail, and hi to Amy, and thank you so much for being with us and helping uh, on comments. And questions we welcome you to ask questions and we'll uh, do our best to answer those as we go along on the video so um, right now we're gonna make egg bites that's kind of a popular thing to make in the instant pot um, and they're really expensive when you buy them at Starbucks but you can make them at home for a fraction of the price and have them just in the fridge and heat up and grab them for a quick snack or a quick breakfast and yep. then we're gonna make some cream eggs. Mm, favorite. <laughs> they are a favorite. They're a little bit more fancy and frou-frou. They're um, a recipe from Julia Child and from her cookbook, mm -hmm. and they are so good. And so creamy. simple <laughs> and creamy and just something I would have never thought to make on my own. Um, and then we're gonna show you how we like to make overnight steel cut oats. We eat a lot of oatmeal in our house, and um, I love overnight steel cut oats for on a quick morning when we have to get out of the house because you wake up with a nice hot breakfast already ready, waiting in your Instant Pot, so it's great for that. So let's get going. Okie dokie. Um, Abigail, let's see, I'll show you the batter for the egg bites first, and we're 
we have a large family and uh, so we're going to make a, a good sized batch of egg bites. We're also going to use these egg bite molds. These are from Hatrigo and they are great silicone egg bite molds and you can use them several different ways. We've made meatloaves in them a couple weeks ago or last week and now we're making egg bites. So um, first we're going to crack some eggs. Actually first, first I'm going to measure some uh, cream. So I love the Vitamix because it's got these nice measuring lines and I'm always looking for ways to cut down on dirty dishes. So the recipe calls for half a cup of cream. So we're going to pour that in and then seven eggs. And we like to crack eggs on a saucer and then put them in a cup and then put them in so we don't get eggshells. Yes, eggshells, and you don't drip egg white right. egg yolk across the counter. That's right. While you're moving it to the... That is so right. And then put the eggshell down here, and then do you want to put these in? Sure. I'll crack them, and you dump them, okay? Okie dokie. There we go. Uh, it kind of revolutionized my egg breaking to just do them on a flat plate instead of trying to do them on the edge of a bowl because I find that the eggshells don't splinter and fall in as much. Also, I've made the terrible mistake of throwing a, keeping the eggshell and putting the egg <laughs> in the trash. Don't do that. <laughs> it, it's not a good idea because then you just waste an egg and then you have an eggshell that you don't know what to do with. That's right and you just wasted an egg. <laughs> so we're doing seven eggs. There you go. And I'm gonna wipe my hands. They're a little and eggy. So now we have uh, seven eggs is about one and a half cups. So now our uh, Vitamix says it's uh, two cups full and we use half a cup of cream. So five, five, I've been measuring, five eggs is about a cup and then like, I've done some eggs that are bigger than others, but every time it always adds up to five, one cup. Five eggs, every time. Every five time I've done eggs. it, is, it might be a little bit over or a little bit under, but it usually always adds up to half a cup. So if your recipe calls for half a cup of eggs, I okay. don't know any egg that call, a recipe that calls for that. But um, well, sometimes the Trim it's Healthy good, Mama calls for yeah. eggs in, the, in a, like a half a cup measure. Yeah, so it's just good to know the measurement of eggs. So uh, the next ingredient is four ounces of cream cheese. So I just literally cut that block of cream cheese in half. And we're going to drop it in to the Vitamix. And the Vitamix is so great because it blends all this up perfectly and effortlessly. Like literally, you push the button and it's going to have him cover that with the rest of that and then a little bit of salt. So we really like measuring salt with this setup because it's so quick and easy. Um, I'm going to do just about a third of a teaspoon because we're using salty bacon, salty cheese, and I don't want these to be okay, too, blender. too salty. And then, yep, we're going to blend it up. Um, okay. Let's see. So you always have to make sure it's on. Let's see. It's hard uh, you think of how to mix upside down. Yeah. Okay. I think that seems pretty well mixed up. Yeah. So that's our batter, that's the base, and then uh, the awesome thing about egg bites is that you can use whatever fla flavors you want. So we're gonna, we are going to spray these silicone molds with cooking spray, and know. Abigail's going to work on that. Um, I'm going to move these eggs for a second. Here we have bacon, some Swiss cheese, some shredded cheddar cheese, some blue cheese. We really liked the bacon and blue cheese together. And we're also going to add a little bit of green onion. So Abigail's going to show you how we like to chop up green onion. Getting her knife here for her. Put on my cloth glove. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside. 
so you can see well. Okay, so how thin am I cutting these? Cut them pretty small. Okay. So I'm just going to uh, cut off these dry ends up here. And really, we so just need probably two or three. Two, okay, I was going to say that's going to be a little go. hard. Uh, so I'm just going to cut off these dry ends right here, and it should not be too hard. To, it's not hard at all. And I'm also, in a minute, I'm going to cut off this end after I get this. And green onions, they're, you can see they're kind of curly. They're not super straight, so they can be a little bit... Um, I don't know, just, it takes a little getting used to. Yeah. But you want to just line them up so they're going the same direction. And I'm going to cut off this root. Yeah, we just, for this, we want just the nice green part because that's what's tender and kind of more yummy to eat. Okay, so. so she's just going to cut these nice and thin. Try not to get them under my blade. Uh, you want to take the time to just cut them nice and thin because you don't want a big old chunk of onion in your mouth. It's just not as appetizing as just a little bit. Okay, so is that for thin enough? Some I, would, I, did. I would just take and maybe move these aside and just give those a quick chop. Okay. And I'm going to spray the next egg bite mold because this is going to make 14. And the really nice thing, so we have a large family so we can all eat this no problem. But uh, these stay perfect in the fridge and they are an excellent snack. You can eat them cold or hot. You can take them with you. Um, they're just fantastic. Okay, so these are done. Perfect. Okay, so we can make kind of, the awesome thing about these is you can do whatever you like, whatever fancies you and whatever you might have on hand. Yep. So um, we're gonna do a little bacon. I love this crumbled bacon. It's real bacon, it's not um, bacon bits. And you could do diced up ham. If you had cooked sausage on hand or part of, you know, if you used part of a roll of sausage, but you um, just have a little bit left over, this is a great way to use up some sausage. Hey, um, if you would not mind, do us a favor and click on the like button to, um, it just helps us to allow more people to see this. The Facebook algorithm just prefers if people like the video. So if you can like it or share it, that would be awesome and we could get more people here and um, show them how to make breakfast too. Yeah. So are we going to do bacon in all these? Sure. Bacon goes with all the things. So do you want to fill the rest sure. of these? And then I'm going to do... A little um, green onion in a few of these. I don't think these. we have enough bacon. I think we have. We've got more enough. in the fridge if we need it. So um, I'm going to do green onion in all these, and then we'll just do a combination. Uh, I like somewhere. if I have some leftover sautéed veggies. You want me to chop up some more green onion? I don't think we need any more green onion. Um, if you had sautéed bell peppers in the onions, that would be awesome. So we, mommy's putting in blue cheese, and this is Swiss cheese, mm -hmm. and then we also have shredded cheddar cheese. That's and right. which ones do you want to be Swiss cheese? I don't know. Just do three or four. Um, if you had some sautéed mushrooms, that would be super yummy mm. in this. Man. Just kind of anything you have on hand. I think even... Um, we've been eating tons and tons of squash and zucchini. What if you put a couple of sure. Swiss in that? Could you put... And I think if you had... Sometimes we'll chop up the squash really tiny and saute that with onion. And if we had some leftovers of that, that would also be yum. Could you put, like, croutons in here with a... Like, so you could have, like, a starch and a veggie and a... You probably could. A, and it like a full meal in a little cup. Uh -huh. egg you cup. might have to eat if you put more croutons in. You might have to eat three or four. Yeah, yeah, yummy. But they and they might get soggy. It's just an idea, you know. Right. Well, like when you make breakfast casserole, that'd be a good oh, thing yeah. for you to try. Yeah. You could put bread okay. down in the bottom. So um, this is really foamy when you first start. So you might have to come back again 
and let it uh, fall a little bit. And we're just carefully pouring these in, each one, which is another, I think, great reason to use a blender or Vitamix for this because um, then it's got a nice pour spout. It just pours in really easily. This Looks is a like really a fun food for little ones to eat. It kind of makes a, a nice egg, high protein breakfast that your toddler can eat with their hands. Mm -hmm. So I like that. Or your husband, <laughs> if he wants to eat with his hands. <laughs> or me when I need a quick snack. Um, another thing that would be really good in this, oh, I even ran out. Okay. Well, shall we break a couple more eggs? Sure. Okay. All right, we're going to break a couple more eggs, and if you want to grab that Vitamix, we'll pull it sure. back up here. Excuse me. Sorry. Sorry. Mm -hmm. There we go. Thank you. So long. Really, probably just one short, and now I'll end up having too much. Here we go. Okay, so should we put. Oh. You don't have an egg in here. Mm -hmm. And I've got this. Uh, Should I just a tiny bit of cream cheese? Yeah, put the egg in. There we go. Okay. We'll How get a little cream? bit of this cream cheese and just a splash of cream. There you go. And a little bit. So you can see it's not super technical. There we go. Okay. Real quick. Let me see. <laughs> Can you do a backwards girl? Okay, that's okay. probably good. Here we go. There we go. And it's almost perfect. Yes. Okay, and none really look like they need refilling, so. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. Ha <laughs> ha. So we haven't tried the Instant Pot Blender. Has, does anybody have that? Um, feel free to make comments and tell us what your reviews are of that. So um, now we're going to set this up in the Instant Pot. Um, so you're, you, I like to use the trivet, even though I have uh, the sling that goes with the egg bites. I like to use the trivet also because then it gets everything out of the water and I just make sure that um, there's nothing going to be, that the eggs are not going to be sitting down in the hot water. And I'm using about a cup and a half of water. This is an eight quart Evo. Um, by the way, we're really Don't liking put the this. egg cups on first. Uh, yes, it's that's a great hard idea. To drop those in. So when you're putting on your egg cups, you need to be careful that they don't, um, you have to like offset them so that they don't fall into each other. It's happened a few times. Yes, and you end up with liquidy eggs that are not done yet. So you just have to be really careful about that. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Go ahead. Drop in. Okay. Nope, I think we're good. I think awesome. we're good. And I'm going to make sure that it is offset and we can see those because we don't want that ceiling over the top. Um, some, some people like to use parchment paper over the egg uh, bite molds and, or foil, but I haven't found that to be necessary. We just try to avoid dripping steam all over everything. Um, we're going to go ahead and start the Instant Pot and we can talk more about that. Okay, uh, so on our Fearless Newbie Instant Pot course, I have a little 
uh, mnemonic device that I like to use. Liquid, lid, valve, program, pressure, time, pause, or start. And that helps me go through a little checklist every time so that I remember everything. So we already put our liquid in, we closed our lid. The valve on the Evo is already set, but uh, if you have a Duo or a Lux, you want to make sure that your valve is set to sealing for pressure cooking. Liquid lid, valve, program, pressure. So the program we're going to use is pressure cook. And on this one, uh, it has an egg program. They don't all have a, an egg setting. But basically, the program is similar to the manual or pressure cook but you're going to select your time and I'm going to turn up the time on these egg bites we're going to do five minutes at low pressure and then we're going to natural release it for three minutes and I like to cook eggs on low pressure so and then I'm going to go ahead and press start liquid lid valve program pressure time pause or start um, I like to cook eggs on low pressure because I I feel like it cooks them a little bit more um, gently. Eggs are pretty delicate. Um, and you don't I, want them to feel rubbery. You don't they want get rubbery, rubbery eggs. They're just never any good. So um, low pressure I find is what I like to do. Hard boiled eggs, um, egg bites, the cream eggs, and also I like to do uh, white meat in there. So when I do like chicken breasts, anything kind of more of a delicate, fragile food, I do on low pressure. So, um, are we doing the oats next? No, nope, we're doing the cream eggs okay. next. Yummy! So, we've greased two of these, yes. and we need to grease two more. So, we for the cream eggs, you're going to just take a little butter and um, smear it around in your ramekins. Uh, you do want individual ramekins, so you don't want to use the egg bite molds for this because you want to eat it right out of this little cup. Because um, otherwise, just, you might you can dump it out, but it's super liquidy and it's, right. It's just uh, and you, it ruins. Yeah, it's just much better if you use ramekins. There are also um, egg bite molds that are stainless steel that kind of come out and separate. You can also do custard cup if you, custard cups if you don't have ramekins. Yes. Any kind of small, six ounces or less. Yeah. These are six ounce ramekins. And we're just smearing these with butter. So the recipe for this one on our website at thecookingfamily.com uh, just tells you how much to do for one egg and then however many eggs you need, um, just increase it by that much and you'll know how much to have. So. Yes, the recipe card has a calculator. So you, if you put in eight, then you it'll, can increase it. Uh, and it'll do the math for you, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so first we pour in the cream, because these are cream eggs, and I need a little tablespoon measuring spoon. I don't see one in our little supply box. So it, the recipe is a tablespoon of cream plus a half a tablespoon of cream and then uh, one egg and some herbs. So Abigail, will you chop up, uh, did, we, did we use all the green onions? Yes. So she's going to chop up some parsley. Really love fresh parsley for mm -hmm. this. Is this going to be enough? Or more? That'll be great. Okay. And then um, I'll use that one. They're searching for the tablespoon measuring spoon. I think Miriam washed it earlier, but this, this is a one and a half and it'll work well. So I'm just dicing this really fine. That helps it evenly spread. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Thank you. I'm glad you're remembering that. Okay, so yes, this is the Hatrigo stainless steel egg cup molds. And so you can use these for this too if you have this on hand. Um, and it fills, one egg fills this up fully. I can even show you. Uh, I'll butter a couple of these and show you how that works. So 
So these, this also is a push pan, and so um, it's really cool. The whole, you can use it to make little meatloaves or little uh, cakes, um, or you can use the, just this pan by itself as a push pan for making a cheesecake. It's pretty fabulous. So the parsley's done. Oh, yay. Yeah. Can you do a few more green onions? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Same um, thickness. Little kids can do the buttering with their fingers. Just make sure that they wash their hands really well and then they can they really enjoy smearing the butter all on the inside of this. I like to use butter for these because it just adds that creamy flavor uh, that canola oil in a spray can doesn't doesn't have. So Yum, yum. Uh, we really like, this is a, a breakfast that we really like to do on birthdays. Um, it's just kind of a real special, when we have a tea party or something. We made it on Father's, Father's Day. We did, we did. We had these on Father's Day. Um, they're just always a hit because they're so yummy and um, they're rich, pretty luxurious, and a little bit more fancy than... I don't know. Regular fried eggs or? Yeah. One of our favorites. Our chickens are gonna start laying pretty soon. Yes, our chickens are gonna start laying pretty soon. I think maybe some in July, the, yeah. the early the layers. The leghorns are gonna start laying in July. That's amazing, which yeah. is just a couple weeks away. Awesome, okay, so now I'm gonna start putting the cream in. Um, so this is a one and a half tablespoon measuring, so I'm just going to go with about a third, I mean uh, two-thirds of this, and pour it in, and then Abigail is going to put these herbs on. Okie dokie. On the top of the, you want to mix the herbs in with the cream, and um, then we're going to salt the cream and herbs. And then the egg is basically going to be poached in cream. And uh, it is so delicious. Okay. There we go. Did you put any green onions? Not yet. Yum, yum. Who doesn't love a bunch of cream? Mmm. That's so ever. good. And meanwhile, over here, our egg bites are trying about to come to pressure. Uh, you do want to keep a sharp eye on all this, on your egg bites while they're cooking, because the timing, we found that the timing really matters. It matters even more with these cream eggs. Okay, okay I want the yolks breaking on eggs. the cream eggs to be runny and yes. not hard. The goal is for the cream eggs, the yolk to be kind of a soft boil. Mm. Oh yeah. That's the hope. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to breaking my eggs in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and break them right in the thing, and just be really careful not to get the shells on. Okay, and Abigail, do you wanna do some? Sure. I'll let you work on these. Um, I would encourage parents to let their kids try to break eggs. Um, they can do it earlier than you would think. Yes, it can be a little messy, but it just takes a few times for them to get the hang of it, of what it takes. And like I said, try it, try doing it on a plate because it's a lot easier to crack the egg on a plate um, than it is on the side of a bowl. A lot of times you kind of miss when you're doing it on the side of a bowl and then it just wants to splinter and crack. Okay, so I'm going to grab this more. cream again. So then you're going to use another half a tablespoon of cream and pour this on top of the yolk and your goal is to kind of cover all the egg. Yes, use heavy cream. Your goal is to cover the egg. See how that cream just sticks to the egg? 
so that that egg stays nice and moist. And we did not ever claim that this is a low fat breakfast here. It is definitely not. It is rich and yummy. So see how I'm covering that egg completely with cream. And Abigail, I'll keep doing this. And then if you could put just the tiniest little smidge of butter on, on each one. Okay. Just right on top of the yolk as best you can. Yummy. So Abigail's going to put just How a little is butter. How much tiniest little smidge? Like just that much? Just almost or? Like a little, yep, smaller smaller than that, like that, that even. Yeah. Okay. And you can use your fingers. Okay. There's just no way around it. They slide off, so. Yes. <laughs> yeah, just, it does slide right off that yolk, but it's just so yummy. Oh, there we you go. can omit the butter if you really want to, but if you're having a special celebration, um, just go for it. It's, that fat is good for our brains and sometimes it's just good for your soul. You need to have something decadent every once in a while. Yes, that's right. Yummy, yummy. Okay. We're almost there. I think we forgot to salt them. So we, we need did. to add salt. Just a little touch of salt. And I'm going to use the little salt cracker. And how much time do we have on Three here? Three minutes. Okay. Left of cooking time. Three minutes left of cooking time. And then we're going to let it natural release for three minutes. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to crush some salt on here. And then even some pepper is really good. You want to grab the pepper? Hands are greasy, but okay. I'm here. That's all right. There we go. So these are two different ways that you can cook eggs in your Instant Pot. One is kind of more casual, the egg bites, and then these cream eggs are a little bit more frou-frou uh, for a fun brunch. And now we're gonna set these up over here in the Ultra. And we're not gonna move this pot while it's under pressure. Okay, so pour your water in before you do anything else because you don't wanna try to aim around your eggs. You'll end up getting a cup of water in your eggs. Yes. Or more. Okay, and also remember if you've ever uh, watched our video on um, how to make perfect hard-boiled eggs in your Instant Pot. Um, it's available, it's on YouTube, it's on our website, but we explain in there how a lot of variables uh, can really affect the cooking time of eggs. So um, if your eggs are really cold, they're gonna be less done than if they're room temperature eggs. So these yeah. are probably more room temperature but um, the recipe is based on cold eggs, so we're just gonna have to see. So if, it, if your eggs are not done to your liking, if they're too undone, underdone, you can put them in again for a minute or two, or if they're overdone, next time you'll just wanna decrease your time, or check and see if your eggs were warm, warmer than the last time. So yeah. eggs are just kind of a thing that you have to test and play with. Okay, we, I think we can fit one more stacked right up on top of there. Hopefully. If not, nope, we won't even try it. We'll I think one. last time we put them down, on, or we can just leave it out probably. Hold on, let's see, maybe we can scooch this around. No, it's not gonna no, work. It's not, okay. No, it's okay. Okay, it's not we'll worth that later. <laughs> not worth it. So now I'm gonna close this up. This just went off, so we're letting that naturally release. Keep and watching And this it. one, keep watching it. This one we are gonna do also on egg setting. If your Instant Pot doesn't have, or your pressure cooker doesn't have an egg setting, just do manual or pressure cook. Choose low pressure if you can. So our egg setting is already on low pressure. Um, whoopsie, okay. Start it up again. Oh, this we'll go to egg. We're gonna select the time. We want it to do three minutes and then we're gonna natural release for about three minutes. 
And so we're going to select that. But if you need to change the time, you just turn this. Then you tap on it. Then tap on it. Okay, when the light's blinking, that's when you can change the time. And we're going to change it back down to three minutes. And then, then you can just press start. Press start because it's already set for low. Okay, so those are in and going. And here we go. We're going to use this cream on our oats here in a second. Um, now we're just going to do a little cleaning up. And. Um, then we'll show you how we like to do our steel cut oats. Yummy. Uh, steel cut oats, like I said earlier, are a fabulous quick breakfast that they can be already finished when you wake up. And it doesn't hurt them to sit. Um, they do really great. I do not like uh, rolled oats in the Instant Pot. Sometimes the kids like to make them. I find it to be a little bit more mushy. <laughs> For my preference but um, but steel cut oats turn out fabulous they can soak overnight and uh, you can have everything done ahead of time uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and show that we're gonna wait one more minute for these okay watching okay this does not show the pressure level it just shows the temperature. I okay. think that's interesting. Well, it's saying hi. I think that's oh, the temperature. It's on keep warm. That's why it switched back to oh. high. Okay. Okay. So oats, oh, steel cut oats. Um so these are the Bob's Red Mill steel cut oats. Usually I buy steel cut oats at Aldi. They have a great price. Done. Um so this is done. Okay, go ahead. She's gonna it already drop. Oh, it already dropped after just three minutes. This Evo is really efficient. It heats up quick and the temp the uh, um, pressure goes down quick. They rose. Yes, they're wonderful looking. Mm -hmm. um, Do we need a hot pad? I or? I think the silicone is not very hot. Okay. I'm gonna pull that out. The steam is hot though. Yeah, <laughs> I tried to grab it and I'm like reach in and pull out. Okay, so I love this, um, you know, it's like you've got all your eggs in one basket here. It is such a great little tool. Thank Can we have you. a fork? Okay, and I'm just going to poke down into one to make sure uh, that they are They're getting a fork. I don't, oh, you're done. So before I pour them out. Okay, so sometimes, see this is a, not quite done down here in the, in the middle of the bottom. So I'm gonna put this one back in for just a minute, but these ones are done. And I don't even remember which one these were. I think the blue, was the blue okay. the blue cheese or the green one? It's okay though. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go back to egg, and I'm just going to do one minute on low pressure and start. Okay, and okay. then I'll take this fork, and I'm going to pull this one out. This one I can tell is cheddar cheese, and you can see how that's nice and melty. Oh, oh that one's not done either. Okay, so I need to adjust my time. So we'll put these back in with these other ones. Here we go. That's and okay though, it happens. It does. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna swap these. Will you set the green sure. underneath? There we go. And we're gonna just put these back in. So that's what you do if they come out and they're a little bit liquidy. Test them first. And I'm gonna make sure again that they're offset so that they're not, um, sitting right on top of each other. If you're only doing one tray of eggs, they will be done, I do believe. Okay, so we're gonna this leave this on. as it was, and we're just gonna go ahead and wait for that for a couple seconds. Now that that's not under pressure, do you wanna go ahead and move it? Um, I think we're okay, because okay. we'll just, um, 
put this on. So uh, we did test this earlier and it worked. So again, with those variables, so just test out what works. Make sure you take notes and write it down. Um, I really like my eggs to not be overdone. So some recipes call for it to cook for like 15 minutes and I think that's too yeah, that's long too for long. me. So then I end up airing on the side of too low or um, just not wanting to have them overcooked. So, and I need my little rag to wipe off. I don't know where that went. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so, uh, so we have a little announcement we wanna show you. We had an awesome birth here oh, yeah. on our little homestead this week, this weekend actually on Father's, Father's Day. Day. So um, our new calf, Cookie, our cow, Cookie, gave birth to her calf on Sunday. It was a perfect birth and um, the, everything went great. Everything went smoothly. We really prayed for that because um, we're total newbies at this. There you can see Hannah. Her face is just classic. Uh, seeing this baby calf be born. Her name is Ginger Snap. Um, and there she is trying to stand up. It was amazing. Um, it's been amazing to see Cookie turn into a mama. Um, and really, she never mooed hardly at all. About three times the whole time we had her. And then Since as January. soon as that calf was born, she started talking to her baby. <laughs> And it was, it's been incredible to watch. She's a good mama. Um, her instincts kicked in and she did everything just as she was supposed to. And um, we're just so excited and overjoyed about our new precious baby calf. And we've been milking uh, morning and <laughs> evening because she has so much milk, dairy cows are um, bred to produce a lot more milk than a than the calf needs. So you have to relieve them. Um, you're not taking, we're not taking any milk away from the calf. We're just helping her to not have so much milk in her udder. And so our shoulders, I don't know about you. My, my shoulders, shoulders are, are sore, yours are fine. Mine are fine. <laughs> I'm not sitting on a stool doing this. I'm squatting doing this. Yes. <laughs> Lottie so prefers the, the stool, youth. I like the squatting. <laughs> youth. They've got uh, so much energy, and I'm so thankful. Um, it's been truly a family affair, getting her milked and trying to take care of her. Um, she's had some swelling, and we're trying to pre prevent mastitis. And We um, usually leave about a quarter for the calf. She, yes. And then the uh, ginger goes, and she finishes off the other three quarters. So. Right. Yes, yeah, so it's been super exciting. Uh, the first day, the very first um, time we really got some good milk we filled the bucket almost up we had oh, yeah. almost three gallons and that was pretty exciting i think we actually did have three felt, gallons we felt just felt pretty gave, gratifying we gave about half a gallon to all the animals yes. they love it and we're trying to keep cookie from kicking the bucket um that's, that's also been, been a little experience. challenge but she's getting better she every time yes. she's learning so learning and trying to behave and we're trying to figure out you know where to keep the calf and yeah. So it's so fun. Long, it's an adventure. How long is that going to Okay, release? we're going to just let this natural release. For equal cooking time? So like we cooked it for one For a few minutes, and uh, okay. we're going to go ahead and put, put the oats on. Okay. Me, let me check on this. This just came up to pressure. These are the cream eggs. These are the ones that are more sensitive um, if you like them um, a little bit runny inside the yolk. So keep a sharp eye back there. Okay. So for the steel cut oats, uh, the night before or the morning of, uh, but we, uh, if you have a quick morning and you have to go and you want breakfast to be ready when you wake up, hot and ready, no microwave needed, just take your oats. And the ratio that I like for steel cut oats uh, in the Instant Pot is one part oats to one and two thirds parts water. So if you look on the bag, you'll see a much different ratio. 
but they are accounting for steam. They're accounting for you to be cooking it on the stove and a lot of steam escaping. And they like there's a little bit more um, porridge than I do. Yeah. So um, I really like the ratio of one part of oats, or yeah, one part oats to one and two thirds parts um, water. And I'll show you what I mean. So you can take any container and um, the Aldi ones come in a little canister. We can't use this bag. So here's my one part. So this is one, and then we're gonna do this amount of water plus another two thirds of water. So that is how we're gonna do that. I'll go fill that up. I've, oh, wait, I think I've got this there. one full. Awesome. So I think the one part was up to this little ridge. Yeah, right up to this ridge. This is just a plain old plastic container. Reusing it. Those little to-go containers from the Chinese restaurant are really awesome too. So here's my one part. And then I'm gonna do two thirds again. So back filling this about two thirds full. That's been releasing for three minutes now. Okay, I think we can probably let it go. Those are the egg bites. Okay, and then you just wanna kinda wanna give this a little stir to make sure all your oats are nice and moist. Um, salt. Just oh. one little quarter teaspoon of salt. Okay. And then every time in, when you cook any starchy food under pressure, you always want to use some kind of fat. Um, and also when you're cooking on the stove and everything boils over, um, the reason people say to use some fat is it helps with the foaming. Yes. You know, in this whole stop using fat thing, um, we quit doing that, but then I was always having everything boil over. And once I realized the fat helps prevent stuff from boiling over. So we just put about a tablespoon of butter in there. You can use coconut oil, ghee, any kind of fat you like. Yep. Coconut oil would make it dairy free. And that's it. So that's just super simple. And then I want to show you how, um, uh, you know, you could also, this is just a little side note, if you like to do soaked grains um, to help get rid of phytic acid, you can add a little tablespoon of vinegar in here and that will um, help relieve the phytic acid, but also just soaking them overnight does the same. Um, and so if you're doing this overnight and you want to prepare ahead, you're going to want to do the delay start function on the Instant Pot, which is a great feature. So I've got my liquid, my lid, valve. Now I'm going to set the program. Okay, so I like to use the porridge setting just because it's a grain. And high pressure, I'm going to change my time down to just 10 minutes. And then that's all you do if you're going to cook it right now. But if you want to do the delay start, then you press delay start and then you change it to the number of hours that you want it to delay. So if you're going to go to bed at 10 and you want your oatmeal ready at 6, actually then you would want to do 7 hours because you've got to remember that you have a cooking time. I'm going to go ahead and press start. Let's see. I press cancel. I think that's the only way you can cancel the delay start. I don't want to cancel. You don't want to cancel the No, I just want okay. to so start. Should just start. Okay. There we go. There we go. There was my pause on this machine. So some of the Instant Pots start differently than others. Um, so you do want to calculate in your cooking time. It won't be ready in, in the amount of time that you delay it. It will start in the amount of time that you delay yep. it. So the oats take about half an hour to 45 minutes total. Probably closer to half an hour to 45 yeah. minutes. I allow an hour because they sit and they're perfect. There is no problem for them sitting. So yeah, go ahead and just sit. allow yourself an hour and then you won't have any worries over whether it's going to be done in time or yes. not. So, okay. So these have now been keeping warm for one minute. We're going to let this go ready. another couple minutes. And we're gonna try these again. Hopefully they're completely finished. They even puffed up a whole bunch more. They did. Wow. 
Yum. Do you know why they puff up like that? Well, eggs. The incredible edible eggs. Eggs just do that. Puff. But they will settle back down. Yeah. Kind of shrink. You can kind of see that. Yum. All right. Yummy. So Here's I'm gonna go. Hoover I'm gonna go ahead and just flip these out here. Okie dokie. This is warm. It's not hot like metal would be though. So I'm just gonna take these and they're gonna pop out right onto our plate. I smell that yummy blue cheese in there. Mm-hmm. And set that aside. And then. Um, just let those cool a little bit, and they're just fantastic to eat. Just um, washing this. I might need another plate. Just got two minutes. To put the other ones on, too. Y'all are such great helpers. Thank you very much. So here are these. These ones, I can see some yummy green onions in there. Um, do avoid, like, you can see a little bit of that steam, and it's, I promise you, it's not going to be a problem. I'm going to go ahead and release it. Egg. Go ahead. Cream eggs. And then we're just popping these right out. And there you go. You see how that um, cooking spray just allowed these to pop right out of there. I'm going to arrange these a little bit more, but they're kind of hot. I love seeing that yummy bacon, melted cheese in there. So delicious. So you can buy these at Starbucks. I, I've only treated myself to those one time. And they're pretty pricey, but you can see that this, you can make them at home for a fraction of the cost and have them to go and then go pick up your coffee. These are done. These are done, yay. Okay, so we're gonna need some we'll tongs and a hot here. pad. They're gonna be hot because they're glass. Yes. So. And I'm gonna thank you. There we go. Okay, so here is our first little cream egg to come out. Yeah, mom. Thank you. Oh, they look so good. They look perfect. And then I'll pull out the ones that we did in the um the little egg cups. Um, this is fabulous because uh, this push pan also has a handle which allows you to just grab it. Can I have another? Um, Miriam makes these hot pads and we just love them. She is like a little machine. This was her first this one ever. This is her first one and then she comes up with all sorts of different patterns. Um, we love them. We use them so much, and um, she saved up her money for almost a whole year yeah. <laughs> to buy the eighty pound or no five pound five, five pound, pound bag of pot holder loops that are real. They're really high quality. The bag was um, <laughs> the bag was humongous. You know, a five pound bag of flowers like this, but the five pounds of these cotton loops pot holder are light. loops. And so it's just she giant. still has bigger than out a, of it, and she's bigger she's than been using them for like two years. Yes. So we have a whole collection of these. They're awesome. Okay, so uh, check these out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut into it with the fork, and so you can see the yolk is not really runny, but it's not fully done either. Um, so they're so good. Which these are really yummy. And I'm going to have a little taste test. Mm. You get me a fork so I can have one? And, oh, we also do like to eat these with a spoon so you can have that cream right on there. Um, so we like the yolk to be a little bit underdone. We prefer them to not be fully cooked, so we like it this way. If you like your eggs a little bit more done, you can just leave it maybe one more minute and on the natural release. Ah. <laughs> oh, it's yummy. Mm -hmm. Creamy, delicious. I might want just a hot. little bit more salt. <laughs> it is, but I think I might like salt. 
I think you do too. There you go. Um, I love that green onion and parsley in there. Mm. It just adds a lightness and a freshness to the eggs and to the heavy, rich cream. Yeah. Oh, so yummy. I love that it. That Julia Child has such great ideas. And here's the uh, hubby trying the egg bite. We didn't try that's, our egg bites. That's either. blue cheese, I believe. Is that blue cheese? It's my favorite. Yes. I'm going to try blue cheese. I'm going to try blue cheese. Yeah, that one's blue cheese. So Yummy. good. Blue cheese and bacon. Oh, and this one even has the onions in it. Ah. It's not. <laughs> there we go. I'm having a hard time getting it on her fork. <laughs> there we go. They're light and fluffy. They're not at all rubbery, mm. which we love. And full of flavor and so easy. And now we can put these in the fridge. They keep for several days. Um, has anyone ever tried freezing these? I haven't. Uh, we would love it if you would say in the comments if you've ever tried freezing egg bites um, and how it turned out. Okay, you could, fr I know you could freeze the batter. Like if you have your liquid egg mixture and you just wanted to freeze that, I know you could freeze that. Okay, so, oh, we're gonna show you the oats and how they turned out. We did a batch earlier so that we wouldn't have to wait. Okay. This is not awesome. under pressure. Right there. As you can see, it's been releasing for hour and almost two hours. So this is our first original Instant Pot, and as you can see, it's very well loved. And um, it uh, has experienced some joys and trials in its life. Um, okay, so here are these steel cut oats. You can see they definitely need a good stirring once they're finished. And so uh, you'll want to give them a good stir. Sometimes there's a little bit of liquid um, up at the top. And we're going to dish some out. And I wanted to show you, too, some of the things that we like to top our oats with. Okay, so I'm just going to make a little bowl here. Abigail's got these toppings coming. Okay, can I have that cream? Thank you. I'm just going to pour this in. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so this batch of oats is really big if you do the whole package, but um, this usually feeds our family of about one and a half meals, maybe two breakfasts. Um, and then the leftovers refrigerate and heat up perfectly. So you can heat them up in the microwave, just add a little bit of water, or if we have a whole container of the oats, I will just turn them back into the Instant Pot, add a cup of water, and just steam them for about uh, one, one or zero minutes, and that heats it up great, and then you just stir it up and serve it again. Uh, so that even makes a second really quick breakfast that week, which is another bonus. Yes. So for our toppings, we really like butter on this. So I'm going to grab this. Butter is a favorite <laughs> treat around here. So, We're going to have a lot of that. Uh, the kids would always come home from Mima and Pawpaw's house, and they were like, Mommy, Mommy, Pawpaw makes the best oatmeal. And I said, well, find out what he does. And uh, he puts fruit in it and butter. He How puts much like butter? A, a, two sticks. I don't think it's two sticks, but not I think it's sticks, one entire one stick. stick. But I'm not quite that. Uh. It is amazing. He <laughs> has dried apricots in it, and he puts walnuts and almonds. Yes. And I like having crunch, the crunch in yes. all those good. So you can add nuts. We didn't really yeah, have You any, can add but. nuts. Um, one of our most common uh, things that we put on it is peanut butter. You can melt just the jar of peanut butter in the uh, in the microwave, not the jar. <laughs> I was gonna melt say. a cup of peanut. Oh no! Uh oh, there went my lid over there. I didn't have it secure. Um, 
but you can melt peanut butter in the microwave and it pours on the oatmeal and it's really fantastic with raisins. Um, today we're doing a little special thing with blueberries because they're in season right now. And uh, don't forget a little bit of brown sugar on yep. here. Uh, in the fall, we love to do cranberries and walnuts. And we also make pumpkin. Cranberry. Pumpkin. So um, we like to, at that stage where we opened up the Instant Pot at the end, uh, in the fall, we like to make pumpkin oatmeal and we'll just put in a, a small, like the 14 ounce can of pureed pumpkin. Brown sugar. Brown it's sugar, like a pumpkin pie. Just molasses and, and cinnamon pumpkin sugar. pie spices. We just like um, <laughs> cinnamon sugar. We make our own cinnamon sugar. We, um, we just put like three parts cinnamon, ground mm -hmm. cinnamon, and then one part sugar. And right. it, it's, it just adds a little sweetness yes. to it. You could probably even put cinnamon on the, on yeah, the um, probably. blueberries, but I don't know. I think we'll just do plain. Did I put enough cream? Uh, probably not. Okay. We'll go for just a little bit more cream on there. You can, of course, use milk um, right now. That is going to be so yum. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, those blueberries taste so good. Mm, yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, we're so glad you've been here for breakfast. Uh, we're going to show you some calf pictures one more time. Um, we would love it if you would go to our Facebook page and like us on Facebook. We're the family. And uh, you can go to facebook.com slash the cooking fam. You can also follow us on Instagram. And um, go to our website. You can sign up for our course. The, we have a free course called the Fearless Newbie Instant Pot Mini Course. And you can sign up on there at thecookingfamily.com um, to take our course for free and get you started using your Instant Pot. And um, I think that's it. We just hope that you enjoy a great breakfast with your family. We want you to remember that you can cook and uh, enjoy a great meal together with your family. Get your kids involved in the kitchen and um, let it be a family affair. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next week. Same time and same place. That's 1130 Eastern Time and 1030 Central. Bye. See you next time.